been a memorable year for Milt Stiegel. And he broke Alan Pitt's touchdown record back in the Labor Day Classic between Winnipeg and Saskatchewan. Catch this, of the year. This may be one of the, if not the catch of the year, the catch of the year right there for Milt Stiegel. These Bomber fans are blue. Yeah, it's uh, been that kind of season. We'd see more of that look here this afternoon. Plus in one great cup. And since then, it was, it's been downhill. Hey, I understand what he's going through, and every player does, trying to wrestle between family and football. But I, I really believe that the pressure on Brendan Tamman to sign off-season free agents and to build this football team into a contender quickly will really influence Milt Stiegel's decision in the offseason because he does not have a great cup ring. He is, he's still in quest of that great cup ring and nine touchdowns short of the all-time record co-held by George Reed and Mike Pringle. It's all based on uh, my family and my wife and my son and and we're going to talk about it and, and go from there. Hopefully I'm back next year. Uh, you know, I, you never heard of a football player who said, I want, I want to retire. It's just other priorities that they have to take care of. So we're going to talk about it. I'm going to try to influence her to let me come back. And I even told her she can come up here, but, you know, she likes to work. She likes being in Atlanta. So we're going to wait and see what happens, you know. First down and Mikta looking into the corner. And Milt Stiegel has one more touchdown. Number 129 of his Hall of Fame career. Take a look at one of the best all time. And the fans that remain here give him a standing ovation. Will that be the last? We hope not. Big day for Brian Clark, and maybe the last day for Milt Stiegel. 46-24, the final. Winnipeg Blue Bombers head coach Doug Berry wants to make it very clear at camp, no one's job is safe. All right, maybe Milt Stiegel is a lock, but like everyone else, the Turtle Man will be pushed. Well, jersey number one could be seen back on the Bombers practice field today. Day three of training camp brought out all-star running back Charles Roberts for the first time. Roberts was upset with the addition of former NFLer Ontario Smith, but backed off on his comments demanding a trade. Roberts has always been good at eluding tacklers, but he could not elude our very own Joe Piscucci. Charles Roberts was doing his best to duck out on the media after practice. He was unsuccessful. After missing the first two days of training camp for his wedding and then bad plane connections, Roberts was a little behind the other backs in camp. You know, obviously I'm a couple of days behind and um, I'm trying to pick up the offense as I go, but uh, it's pretty simple, simple enough for me to even pick up. So. Uh, I said we shouldn't have any problem. The only problem Roberts was having today was answering questions about his comments earlier this month. Calling it a slap in the face, Roberts was upset over the signing of the now injured Ontario Smith and openly requested the Bombers trade him. Charles, do you still want to be traded? Uh, no, I don't. No. What changed your mind? Me? I changed my mind. I, I'm, I like being out there. I like playing. I like uh, uh, the stadium. I like the people on this team. Um, it's a lot of th different things that changed my mind. Even Roberts could tell that he wasn't being convincing and tried to cut the interview short. So can I go? Yeah. Well, Charles, I mean, you, you made some statements in the paper, and people want to hear I know, from you. But I mean, that's, you that's know, why I asked you the question because you said you wanted to be traded. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like I said, I changed my mind, man. But. Uh, you don't have to keep going in, going into it about it, man. You know, I, I'm here to play football, and that's it, you know? That's it. 
It appears that Roberts is still miffed about Ontario Smith's presence, even though the suspended NFLer reported overweight and out of shape. I'm a little out of shape, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it, it was lucky enough for me that I didn't get hurt today. So, you know, we all go through things and, you know, I'm sure he'll get back on the field. But I know what y'all looking for and, and, you know, ordinarily I probably would give it to you, but I'm trying to have a... I'm trying to have a good day for my first practice. Yeah. What are we looking for, Charles? I don't know, man. Y'all looking, y'all looking for something, man, and I can't give it to you today. Roberts, who led the CFL in rushing last season, was concerned that he'd see less of the ball under head coach Doug Berry's offensive philosophy. That was till Berry pointed out the Alouettes actually ran the ball more than the Bombers did in 2005. I took a look at Berry's numbers and what he said, and, you know, if he can do what he did over in Montreal here, I'm fine with it. I don't want to treat Charles Roberts any different than I treat Kevin Glenn, uh, Baron Simpson, anybody that somebody might perceive as supposedly on a higher pedestal than someone else. They're all members of our team, and I'm going to treat them all the same way. Even though he's now here in camp, don't expect Roberts to toe the party line. You can count on another explosive outburst or two sometime during the season. It's a free world. I can speak, and I can say what I feel when I'm feeling it, and... Um, you know, may not be the same feeling now, but when I was feeling it, I said it, so. Milt Stiegel has made his way back to Winnipeg on Friday after spending the off-season in Atlanta. Brendan Tam went out and kind of broke the bank, spent a lot of money, picked up guys. People are getting really excited about Bomber football this year. They're getting excited, but before I comment on that, he should have spent some money on his hair. Have you seen his hair, man? It looked like his hairline is throwing up the Batman sign or something, man, but that's another topic. But, yeah, he went out and, and did a great job. Uh, they knew they had to, had to open up the bank. You know, Kevin Glenn looks like he's slimmed down. He's uh, trying to take your advice. Uh, be a more healthier guy. Yeah, I got, I got on him. Uh, him and Stokes, they both had those childbearing hips, so I think Kevin took it personal. If I'm correct now, he's engaged. I'm for sure his fiance got on him about it. You know, she, she needs the one who have the childbearing hips, so he didn't need that. But he's looking good this year, you know, uh, my understanding. I can see they brought some guys in here to, to push him for his position, just like every other position. So that's a good thing. Competition is always good. It keeps you on your toes. It keeps you working hard. Uh, even Charlie's going to be pushed for his position. He may be crying about it, but so forget Charlie. He's a little crybaby. He, he's the best player in this league. He doesn't have anything to worry about, but it's good that everybody's being pushed, and, and we're just excited about what's going on this year. That's now you got to come out to every, practice every day. The rookie slot back is excited about the possibilities of learning from veteran slot back Milt Stiegel, who has heard a lot of great things about Franklin from former Bomber receiver Robert Gordon. He trained under Robert back in Windsor, and Robert's been telling me a little bit about him, telling him he's, he's an exciting kid, he's willing to learn, he's tough. So I'm willing to, you know, to meet him and help him out, help him out with some things because he's going to help this team win. As soon as I realized I was coming to the Bombers, I, I thought about Milt Stiegel, first of all, and I haven't had a chance to meet him yet, but um, I look forward to, to just learning from him and, and knowing that I was able to share the field with one of the greatest receivers of all time. So that's something that I can talk, tell my kids one day. He has 17 games of NFL experience with the Green Bay Packers. He keeps getting open in training camp, and he's just 25. He's Andre Thurman, and he's making others take notice of him. He's doing good. He's a very confident guy. You know, he played in the NFL for a while, and he has that swagger. And, and I think that's great because he's out there backing it up. You know, don't have a swagger if you can't back it up. But he's out there making plays. He's, he's screaming. He's yelling. And he's not a, he's a CFL rookie, but he's not a rookie. Uh, since we last saw Albert Johnson the third, the speedster has traveled many miles since his rookie season in blue and gold, only to return where it all started. And he couldn't be happier. Um, I had a slight hunch, but... Uh... You know, my wife would always tease me and say, no, you're not going, it's over, you know, it's done. But I always felt like I had, I would have an opportunity to come, especially as long as Brendan was around. I know the coach has changed a little bit, but it was something that was left inside of me that knew, that told me I'd be. Number 85 says that he is the best looking man on this team. You are number 84. Are you better looking than Milt Stiegel? No, you can't compete with Milt Stiegel. He has everything. I mean, and plus, if I say I was better looking than him, um, I'll probably get myself in trouble. That is a very good answer. And Kevin Glenn's right behind you. Is Milt Stiegel better looking than Chris Brazel? Uh, I can't answer that question because I'm a guy. So uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I'm you know, able or capable to answer that question because I'm a guy. But I, I, I do believe that I'm better looking than both of them. 
After missing the playoffs and winning only a handful of games in 2005, the Blue Bombers needed to be overhauled. The team has started with the biggest sore spot, a sorry-looking defense that struggled through coaching and personnel changes, which led to a CFL record for futility. Well, defense was certainly the Bombers' Achilles heel last season, but GM Brendan Tamman went out and addressed that situation with the big free agent signing of linebacker Baron Simpson. The Minister of Defense wanted out of the BC Lions after accepting a reduced role in their defense in 2005. But here he'll be one of the leaders on the field and in the dressing room. As for Mel Stiegel, the other marquee man, most say he's getting better with age. I hate to say it, but I agree with him. I mean, I look great. I look about 21, man. The 36-year-old once again comes to camp in pristine condition, and that's what has given him the edge all these years. There's no sign of slowing down. I think that uh, Milt is just really a superb football player. Uh, he certainly isn't getting any worse, so he's, he's really good. Milt has great moves. He sets good, uh, defenders up really well with his, with his moves, and that's, that's why he's Milt. First and 10 bombers. In 2005, he led the league in touchdowns with 17 to up his career total to 129. He is now nine touchdowns away from breaking the all-time mark shared by George Reed and Mike Pringle. Uh, I'm not going to lie and say I don't want to break the record. Of course I do. And anybody who tells you they don't want to break records, they're, they're lying to you. But I just want it to happen within the, within, within the game plan. I don't want anybody pressing. I know Coach Barry's not going to press. He probably don't even know what's going on, which is great. And I just want it to happen when it happens. And, then, and when it happens, I hopefully I'm a part of it because uh, I go down in history with him. <laughs> So with the all-time touchdown mark not exactly a priority, number 85 remains steadfast on the ultimate prize. The best football of my life would be when I win that Grey Cup. Uh, all the individual stuff and me catching spectacular catches, those have happened in the past, but I haven't won the Grey Cup. So the best day of my football career would be when I win the Grey Cup. And besides that, uh, I mean, nothing else matters. And speaking of kissing and making up, Charles Roberts and Ontario Smith could be seen having a laugh together at today's practice. Of course, Roberts wanted a trade when told of the Bombers' interest in the former NFLer. The two chatted together for a good 10 minutes. Roberts has since stated his desire to stay in Winnipeg, so it seems all is now hunky-dory in Bomberland in the blue and gold backfield. Been Glenn Camaro, getting the start, and he's out to prove to he's going to be the man to lead the blue and gold this year. First pass complete to Milt Stegel, who gets popped by almost bomber Richard Carey. Carey Milt plays it up for the crowd. He was all right. When the regular season starts on Friday for the Blue Bombers. The consensus pick of most experts to be the worst team in the CFL this season. Several media outlets have already pegged the blue and gold to finish dead last in the East. The Bombers can't wait to prove the critics wrong. How many of those guys have even played football before and, and how many times they actually ended up right at the end of the year? So I know in 2001 we were predicted to finish last and we ended up first and second in the Grey Cup. So like I say, that's, that's not in consideration for, I would say, anybody on this team. There he was, number one, the undisputed number one once again. Charles Roberts entered camp, upset with the team for bringing NFL whiz kid Ontario Smith. But now three weeks later, Roberts is the last man standing. It's no secret that Smith's signing originally didn't sit well with Roberts, the reigning CFL rushing champ. But even Blink had to bat an eye when told of Smith's release. I know I said a lot of good things, you know, prior to my, my me coming to camp this week, year, but uh, it's, it's a sad situation, you know, and, you know, I could and all that, but I, I really, you know, I know it's a sad situation for him, you know, it's, it's a tough thing to, you know, go from the height of football to, to, to come and try out uh, for another league and, and not to make it, so, you know, I feel for him. To work with me, all right, coming off a dismal 5-13 and 13 season, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers replaced the coaching staff, signed a a few free agents and opened up every position on the team in training camp. Well, the dust has settled, the jobs have been won, and now the Bombers begin their quest for a Grey Cup tomorrow night in Montreal. It's very threatening in back-to-back -back exhibition Dalton's losses to the Alouettes, the field, but Milt Stegall predicts the Winnipeg new Bombers are ready. I mean, a lot of people may be uh, 
uh, predicting a lot from those preseason games, but that's why you have preseason games, you know, to figure out some things. But we're definitely ready. We're looking forward to this. We know this is the real thing now. There is no second chance in the game. So, you know, we're definitely looking forward to it. Our goal is to score a touchdown. Not a field goal, not to move the ball, but our goal is to score every time we touch the ball. You know, it's not, you know, just tackle. I'm out there to hit you. So um, we, we're going to bring we're going to bring physicalness to the ball game. It's a matter of just, you know, we, we come to get after the quarterback. That's definitely the plan, get after the quarterback, you know, break his rhythm up, and then when they run the ball, stuff it. Coach Barry, he's starting to get that swagger in us. You know, when we step on the field, we got to feel that we're the best thing out there. I know I'm the best-looking guy out there, but I'm also going to feel like I'm the best player out there. I think everybody on our team should feel that way because if you start second-guessing yourself, you're not going to play well. So we definitely plan on going out there thinking and knowing that we're going to win this game. Friday night football, the bombers will explode tonight. You will see, hear it on TSN, Friday night football. Had to be pulled by Doug Berry, who wanted to give his other quarterbacks a shot, and Berry felt a little uneasy about it. He felt Glenn was just getting his groove on, and now looks for Milt Stiegel, and there he is. The leading touchdown receiver in the Canadian Football League last year was 17. Last year, Milt Stiegel put over a thousand yards on the board, talked about retirement in the offseason, waited for a while till he was sure that he wanted to come back and was sure he might make it difficult for Arkale to get his job back. He pin his ears back here as the Bombers started deep, but they flared out to Stiegel. And there's Crutchfield in on the coverage, the veteran Alouette corner, but that will give Winnipeg some breathing room after what I thought was a questionable decision by Albert Johnson III and uh, a tough call for that way. short of the first down when he caught it and wasn't able to turn his feet upfield. Regimbold sets up on the right side and it's Stiegel on the reverse. Milt Stiegel to the 25 and finally stopped at the 23 yard line. I'm too old to be running the reverse, that's it. Never again, that's it. Perfect wrinkle from Doug Berry, who understands the Montreal pressure defense and what does doing this. Putting Milt Stigo right here, it takes him to the outside of that pressure defense, and it gets a speed guy and a veteran on the corner outside of pressure. Ricky Bell with the stop, but in Winnipeg, missed four with injury. Second and ten. Got that one away quickly, and Stigo has the catch. And Milt Stiegel down at the 10-yard line. What tremendous concentration for Milt Stiegel. And this is why everyone is talking about Stiegel again in Winnipeg like they have for the last 12 years. Ricky Bell can't cover this any better. He's going to fight through the pick, be underneath the throw. Stiegel has perfect concentration as that ball just goes over the hand of Ricky Bell. And on time, Kevin Glenn with confidence delivers. He's looking pretty good, Chris. One yard gain. A couple of plays later, Stiegel touchdown on his favorite play, but a holding call brings it back. And touchdown number 127 will have to wait. He's a guy that was third in the league, even in 14 starts, in touchdown passes with 27. Second and 10, quick delivery. Stiegel will be stopped short of the first down and took exception to a hit from. Michael Botterill. Watch yourself, baby. You did not go get in on the tackle. 24 unanswered points. A huge second half as Don Matthews makes it 10 straight season opening wins for the Alouettes. Kevin, I, I, I know you need a bridge because you're not, you know, long enough for to get the ball, some of the balls down hey, there. So hey. we'll go get it. We'll go get a bridge. Hold on, let's get this on camera. Let's get this on camera. Because Mill has all these short jokes. So. We'll go get it. I'm not, no, you're not short. Compared to Charlie uh, Roberts, you're not sure. <laughs> Beat Milt in the game of pool. Somebody's got to walk in. Milt has, Milt, Milt, has, Milt has three stripes on the board, no solids, and the eight is off the table. That means Mr. Glenn won. That's all those short jokes that he was cracking about me earlier today. You know, 
Kevin? Had to get him back. I had to get him back. And that's part of my game plan. I want to come out and not look at, you know, you guys, you, you spend 30, 40 minutes getting dressed. It takes me five minutes to get dressed. It's all part of my game plan. You fool them. When you look bad, the guys don't think you play well, but then I, you know, I'm all nice to them, talk to them before the game, ask you how the family's doing and everything. Then I sneak up on them. So, you know, that's how you got to do it. Get that camera out of my face. This will be the 12th home opener in the career of a super slot back Milt Stiegel. All of them with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers as they host the 1-0 Toronto Argonauts tonight on Wendy's Friday Night Football. Hi, everybody. Dave Randolph, Chris Schultz, Matt Dunnigan, and Jock Climby. And as you know, the Bombers are back in the East of this year. Tough division, tough crowd. And going into the season, I think it's fair to say that the Bombers were considered the weak link. They did lose last week in Montreal 27-17, but they hardly look like a team that is not going to be able to compete. And you can bet there are going to be some Bomber veterans tonight, Schultz, who are going to be ready to go. Oh, absolutely, Dave. And I think if there's one Bomber veteran that can make or break this game, I really do believe it is Milt Stiegel. He has... 154 CFL regular season games under his belt. Now, through those 154, three times he has been shut out. No catches, no yards. All three against the Toronto Argonauts. Kevin Glenn is going to be under some pressure tonight. His comfort has to be Milt Stiegel. If he can make some big plays, I think Winnipeg can win this game. Jocko? Old, I guess we call them now. The almost, uh, it almost ends in a Milt Stiegel touchdown. Looked legit from one angle, but the turtle man actually fesses up before the Argos can throw their replay flag. The ball actually skips into his hands. Career touchdown number 130 will have to wait, but... Cold system, you have to know it well to play it well. And the Argos do that. Stubler, three years running the defense, second and 13. Stiegel's wide open at the Toronto 45 as he found some room in Stubler's defense. It's, it's a play for Kevin Glenn that two things have to happen. The first one is Kevin Glenn has to have time to throw this football because it's a long developing run. You see, he comes out of there, looks to his right. No Argonaut defender around him. Seven carries. He said that was too many. And his last yardage on two carries on this drive. Second and one. and Stiegel wins this battle. He gets inside of Steinau, who's playing in the deep middle and has to turn his hips. A little move. Watch how Steinauer drops back in the middle. See how he opens his shoulders? Now he's got to do a speed turn, and he's blind. In the 34 defense for Toronto, more active on that last play. Roberts loses two and now lines up at a receiver position. Six receivers out. And there's Stiegel with the catch, Jordan Younger. Quickly there to limit Stiegel's progress. Remember we talked about just before the half, the adjustments. They need some first downs. Roberts got five, second and five. Kevin Glenn has Stiegel. Oh, boy, Kenny Wheaton thought he had a pick going the other way. He did, but Kevin Glenn threw it to the outside shoulder of Milt Stiegel, and he knew his veteran receiver would make the adjustment. Left side of your screen, you're right, Kenny Wheaton comes downhill, has a pretty good jump on the ball. But the accuracy of the throw allows Milt Stiegel to take it on the outside shoulder and turn it up. And that is the football game. And the Winnipeg Blue Bombers win their home opener and give Doug Berry his first victory as a head coach in the CFL. And as for Winnipeg, I mean, I'm not convinced yet whether these guys are for real. I mean, are they a good team who just had a bad game against Montreal or a bad team who just got lucky against Toronto? Sean. Tonight, they're setting the foundation Harsh, for everything that they're going to do for the rest of the season. Both of these teams are, and I'm looking forward to it. You know, Sean, you're a wow. pretty tough guy. There's about eight <laughs> Bomber fans right behind you. I'd like to see you take them all on. Milt Stiegel says he will never ask for a trade. He says it's disrespectful for a team to, to, for a player to go to his team and say, I'm going to ask for a trade. This is probably his last year. If the Blue Bombers aren't having a good season, do they owe it to him to trade him to a contender? Go. They do not owe it to Milt to trade him to a contender because 
the Blue Bombers need to believe that they themselves are a contender and that until the very last second that they have a chance to make it down to the Grey Cup. And having Milt Stiegel on your team gives you a fantastic shot to be successful. And I wouldn't trade that kind of asset away. Eric Tillman, if the Blue Bombers are not looking like a contender and it's still a far way away off, do they owe it to Milt Stiegel to trade him to one? Well, for those who don't know, we get blindsided. Great question. <laughs> you know, I, I think, yes, they do, but I don't think that's going to be the case. I think Winnipeg has established that they're a much better team than many thought they would be, and given the dynamics of the race, they're going to be in before the trade deadline. But Milt's a Hall of Famer, an all-star. If they were not in it, I think he deserves a chance to get a ring at the end. I do. Greg Frears, if Milt Stiegel is with this team and they don't look like a Grey Cup contender, do they owe it to him to trade him to one? Well, I th professional sports is tough. It's tough business, and they don't owe him anything. But he's a veteran player who has done a lot for the CFL, has done a lot for this city. And so as a veteran player, I believe you approach this individual, sit down across the table from him, talk it through, and say, what do you want to do? We can cut you. You can go try out the free agent market. Or do you want to be traded? By the way, this is the first week these guys haven't loaned the questions <laughs> beforehand, so that's why they're getting tired of the 20 seconds. <laughs> and we're sweating. By the way, and you, yeah. and you were going to point out that they didn't come up to it. Last year, Edmonton traded Terry Vaughn to Montreal, even though they didn't let him trade him there as a sign of respect. Well, one of the contests the league, the league is running this year is who was the CFL's greatest tandem? What combination of quarterback and receiver worked the best? And this one had 62 career touchdown receptions between them. Kahari Jones to Milt Stiegel, and now Kahari is asking him the questions. Kahari? Thanks a lot, Elliot. This is a guy that I know very well, Milton Stiegel. Now, Milton, you guys have gotten off to great starts in the last two games. But uh, the finishes have been a little little tough for you. What do you do to get touchdowns in the second half? Well, I think we just have to uh, just push the button and continue doing what we're doing those first two drives. We mix it up with the run and, and the pass, and then we come out, I think we got a little conservative and complacent. So we just want to have a consistent game this week, not put our defense in bad position to score some points because this offense, we know we have to score some points because they're very, uh, a very potent offense. Now, you have uh, done everything you can do as a, as a wide receiver, but uh, the thing that's missing in, in your trophy case is a Grey Cup. Uh, do you think this is the team that can get you that? Yeah, I definitely think that. Uh, the, the main ingredient with a Grey Cup winning team is the defense, and the way our defense is playing right now, uh, we don't have to do too much on offense to, to win uh, the Grey Cup, but we know as an offensive unit, our defense is not going to continue playing that way. We're going to have to put up some points, and tonight may be the night where we have to put up some big points. You never know. So as an offensive unit, of course we want to remain consistent, but we know we have to score some points and we want to start that with this uh, evening's game. Well, there's a guy I know that can score some points. Back to you, Ellie. And he scored a lot of those points with Kahari throwing to him. Now, you heard the comment there. They're going to have to start scoring. Is Kevin Glenn the guy who can lead them to scoring, Sean? Well, it's funny that Milt would say they don't have to do too much on offense. Well, good work, Milt. That's exactly what you guys have been achieving so far. Oh, it's not too much. Oh, the nasty <laughs> Sean Millington <laughs> came out today. They're averaging 13.5 points per game in the that's the lowest in the league Kevin Glenn is lo is only ahead of three other passers right now and those are two backups and an injured veteran Damon Allen so you tell me whether they're getting it done as far as I'm concerned we're gonna need to see some big numbers out of them tonight if they expect to be the Edmonton Eskimos. Well, and they need somebody else other than Milt Stiegel and Charles Roberts what other weapons do these guys have Chris Brazel has got to step up and then two younger guys at least to the CFL Thurman and McCord McCord has played really well but they have to have some other weapons because as a defense if that's all you have is two offensive weapons you can clamp down on them and make it very difficult to move the football Hey guys, it's still week three, and historically defenses are ahead of offenses this time of the year. I, I, Kevin is a good young quarterback. Is he a guy you win because of? We don't know that, but clearly, in my opinion, he's a guy you can win with. I think they have enough weapons. For Doug Berry, it's a little bit of challenge. He's been in Montreal with Anthony Calvillo, a guy that's so good that he's almost taken for granted. Now he's got a quarterback that he has to change a little bit with, but I think given this defense, if you give Kevin some success early, he has a chance. Come, that's why That's why I think Edmonton's going to come after him early. Come on, Eric. This is a guy who's... How many leagues... How many years has Kevin Glenn been in the league? I mean, he's been around for a while. This is not somebody who just came up last year, the year before. He's had chance he after had some chance. He had success in, in Saskatchewan. Maybe you watched a different guy than I did. This is a new system, and I would agree yeah. with that. But you know what? He's really tentative right now in that new system, which is typical. We're seeing that in Hamilton right now with Jason Moss going to his conservative uh, release route. So you have Josh Rannick, like you saw last night, leading their team in receiving. Uh, or sorry, two nights ago. But you know what? 
he's going to be able to be very good. He's 27 touchdowns last year. That was second in the CFL. All right, and the Winnipeg fan club will be taking Sean Millington out to a back alley after this game. Okay, now it's time for the picks, and uh, I believe records are not even being put up this week because some people are a little embarrassed with theirs. Eric Tillman, you're going first. And that would include the host. That would, not? Hey, I'm making you guys look good. How would it look if I had a better record than the experts? You know what? I uh, Maybe I'm going to give them the kiss of death, but I'm going to go with the Edmonton Eskimos. I think both of these teams are, are very good teams playing well right now. But I look for Edmonton to bring the big play component in. Defensively, I think it's a good matchup for Ricky Ray. And I think we're going to see something we haven't seen all year. Some big plays in special teams. That's something that's been lacking the first three weeks in the CFL. Tony Tompkins can make a difference. I'm going to say the Edmonton Eskimos as well. Mm. Hervey, Mitchell, Davis, Ray. Those are a bunch of guys who make the difference, and that's why I believe they're going to win today. Greg? Well, you know, like you mentioned at the beginning of the show, is that Edmonton has not been very successful here in Winnipeg. But I do pick Edmonton because wow. I just don't think that Winnipeg has enough talent, I shouldn't say talent, enough legitimate weapons to be able to point, put points on the board. And that's why I believe Edmonton's going to win. I'm going to take Winnipeg. And, uh, <laughs> wow, did so, you hear the yeah. I want to be going out with different people than the ones Millington will be going out with tonight. The reason is, is the way I look at it is this. This team has had a long time since it's been able to play a game that meant this much to it. It's a statement game. A lot of the guy players have rejuvenated, and I think that will stand up for them at home this evening. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers, the Edmonton Eskimos. It is Canada Day here. The CFL on CBC in HD. Kevin Glenn and his mates have a lot to prove next. Down. Bombers now moving the football. Quick pass to Milt Stiegel, and he's wrapped up by Craver, driven back. And they'll spot this one at about the 23, make it a gain of five on the play for the all-time leader, Stiegel. Well, again, a good little bad snap. He does a nice job of corralling that in, getting the ball quickly. One of the things that uh, Coach Doug Berry has said is that Kevin Glenn every week is moving up that progression ladder, making quicker decisions on the football field, and that's what we're seeing so far right now in this drive. To four yards. Here comes the Edmonton Blitz. Kevin Glenn hesitates, now throws high. Jump ball is complete. Milt Stiegel makes the catch. And it'll be a Winnipeg first down. One of the things that he had to work with Kevin Glenn on is trust. And what I'm talking about is trusting your reads. They're going to bring the blitz. He's got to trust his read. He sees he's got single coverage. Craig Ron Stiegel puts the ball up high. He sees that Mill Stiegel's got inside or in front position. That's what the quarterback has to do to be successful. Stiegel was saying their offense matching their defense in performance. The blitz is on. Kevin Glenn bailing. Now he throws downfield. Bill Stiegel wide open. Comes upfield to the 10. Gets a block. Touchdown. before the game and one of the things he says I'm excited like I've never been before for what we're going to do offensively this football game you always say you know we hear a lot of that before a game but this offense well you heard Doug Barry say in the interview with Steve Armitage that Kevin Glenn has been under the gun I have been waiting for 90 minutes to say this Sean <laughs> Millington Kevin Glenn didn't look that bad in the first half did he <laughs> okay get your shots hey I mean, isn't that exactly what I said? Kevin Glenn's going to be great. <laughs> Winnipeg's going to rock this game. I think you predicted 36 nothing Edmonton, as a matter of fact. First two weeks, and just 10 here so far tonight. With authority, a look in, pass to Milt Stiegel, and he'll hustle for another first down. This is all pre-snap read. Kevin Glenn sees it. He looks at the half. The half is playing off Milt Stiegel. Milt Stiegel just takes two steps and breaks it into the middle. I mean, this is there all day. Oh, he's having a wonderful day, Kevin Glenn is, and he's gets to Ricky Ray. Mike Quinn, who was in the Alouette camp late last season. Doug Berry remembers him, and he completes a pass, a hook pass to Stiegel, and he turns up field, and he'll have a first down, beating Keo Craver and celebrates with the Bomber faithful. 
in the East stand. If you talk to Doug Barry about Mike Quinn, Mike Quinn was only there on the practice roster for one week. And after one week, he was in practice in the behind the center, audibling. He had age of the old bomber defenses, the Tyrone Jones days. Play action now, Quinn throwing, and it's complete to Milt Stiegel at full speed in front of Keo Craver. A gain of 16 yards and a Winnipeg first down. And Mark, a little bit of a humor here. Uh, we saw Milt earlier in this quarter catch a ball, go to the sidelines and give the football to the crowd. Well, this time he comes to this side, the east side of the stadium, and all the fans at the bottom stood up hoping he was going to jump in the crowd and give another ball away on Canada here, but he decides to turn around. No such luck. Into the game in the second half after the injury to Charles Alston. Here comes the blitz again on second and long. Quinn throwing for the end zone. Touchdown! Matt Stiegel, his second of the night, and Mike Quinn in his rookie audition throws his first CFL touchdown pass. 30 yards. Well, they run a seam pattern on Milt Stiegel, but the biggest thing is the Bomber offense is putting the foot on the throat. Just runs down the numbers, a little bit of a head shuffle, and runs right by Keo Craver. And look at him play the football. Never loses sight of the football. Great concentration. Second touchdown of the afternoon. But the big thing he got, they are basically attacking, attacking, attacking. <laughs> what a night for Milt Stiegel. Seven catches, 154 yards, and two touchdowns tonight. Congratulations, man. A good protection. He just sits back there. We talked about the fact that he's a pocket passer. Look at that arc on that football. Rainbow. Perfect rainbow. Drops right into the hands of Mill Stiegel. Mike, Mike Quinn, the backup quarterback, savoring his first ever CFL touchdown pass. A 32 year old rookie. And they're all smiles on that bomber bench tonight. Everything going their way. Well, how prophetic is it that Milt Stiegel, as you said, said Kevin Glenn would have a breakout night, that this is going to be an exciting day. You take a look at the touchdown leaderboard there, Mark. And well, he's now got Pringle and Reed within his sights. Six touchdowns yeah. away. All right, and don't forget that Sean Melton also said before the game that Kevin Glenn was no good. He was terrific <laughs> tonight. His family lives in Detroit. Wow. They got to see it. <laughs> And no interview is getting done until I find my barbecue chicken. Who took my barbecue chicken pizza up there, man? Who took my chicken? Well, guys, I'll tell you this. I think if the Winnipeg Blue Bombers play a great game tonight, they beat the Toronto Argonauts by 10, 13 points. I'm going to rubber stamp them as the lead team in the Canadian Football League. Ooh. Now, that's not turning my back on the Montreal Alouettes, but the Montreal Alouettes, they allowed 126 yards in penalties alone in the first half of their game against Hamilton. Three turnovers in that football game. I don't think they're there yet. I think this is one of those games that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, if they play exceptionally well, they can be rubber stamped elite wow. in the Canadian Football League going in week four. The mm. Schultze stamp of approval yeah, and, 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 as the elite team. Even the elite team. Even the elite if they're team. playing a, Damon, a, a Toronto team with no Damon Allen. But I'll go back to the Montreal game. I'll go back to that Montreal game where they held Anthony Calvillo under 200 yards, 198 yards mm -hmm. passing. I thought that was outstanding. No. And I see them improving. If they stay healthy, we talk about elite. If you stay healthy, it has a lot to with, with staying elite as a football team. Uh, well, let me ask you this. It, it's early, and they're, they're, their defense is playing well. Kevin Glenn's coming off a great performance. Is it too early to, to make it? You obviously have no concern well, not about necessarily too it early. being this early in the season. No, not necessarily too early because things go in bursts. Like teams have great first quarters, and then the second quarter they fade, and then they come back on the third quarter. But if you look at the first batch of games, you name another team that has surprised us more, Canada more, than the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Wow. Can you hear everybody in Winnipeg right now? They're that Chris me. Schultz. They're he knows what he's talking guy. about. He went, we love Schultz. He, he went Schultz on me there. You know, <laughs> he, he was breaking it down like that. But you have to. All know, right. This football team is, is, yeah. is doing their job, and they're, and they're making some believers. A lot of mistakes out there. Fake to Roberts. To Stiegel. Down the sidelines. And Milt Stiegel moving closer and closer to all the records in the 
Canadian Football League touchdown lists. He's the all-time leading receiver when it comes to touchdowns. He's moving to becoming Mr. Touchdown as well. He is only six away from tying the all-time touchdown mark. Well, it, he's had just a tremendous career. Again, a little play action, bootleg back, and Stiegel all the way across the field. Steinhardt tries to stay with him, but you know, you know you're... The point's been pretty good so far for the Ballers. Here comes the rush. Glenn lets it go, and Stiegel brings it close to a first down. It looks like it's about a yard and a half shy, depending on the spot. No, they're going to move it. Three, Kevin Glenn. Now with good field position, he can start to operate. Stiegel. Well, Kevin Glenn has also been a beneficiary of having Doug Barry around. And younger. Second and ten again. Glenn has to scramble. And the catch again made by the magic man himself, Mel Steele. Boy, he took a good hit from Kenny Wheaton, and terrific job by Kevin Glenn. He initially wanted to go to Steagle on the hook. He couldn't, so he had to buy himself some time. And as he broke containment, he was able to find Steagle again further downfield. But... You know, nice solid work by Kevin Glenn. He gets good sight lines downfield, and then he starts, and Siegel comes right across, takes the hit, and keeps his drive. His feet to buy a little time, and I'm really impressed with his game. Glenn, quick fire, and a nice grab again by Milt Stiegel. Three-minute warning on the field. Stiegel, another catch. Patience and the poise. I mean, here's Stiegel right here. And you know what? When he when he gets right about there, he, Glenn wants to throw it. He has to then wait till he really clears and gets open on the slant. Watch, Kevin, he's, he wants to go now, now, now. Oh, I got to wait just a fraction. Let him clear. And then I got a better target. That is poor. Sure plants to see. Fake to Charles Roberts in one second. Sure hands of Milt Stiegel, who is right up and in the face of Rolando Steinauer. Well, I love the bootleg action for Kevin Glenn. He can fake, and then he's got Stiegel coming all the way across the field. Now, the beauty of this is Stiegel's got lots of room to just find the stop spot. Now he knows he's got a little separation, speed it up, and he is willing to take the hit because Steinauer. back trying to mount a drive. They have not been able to in the second half. Stiegel again. But I really like that call. You know, you just keep waiting for Charles Roberts to bust out on the ground. And although he has not established himself today, play action with him is still very effective because the seed's always in your mind that they're going to keep and try to pound him and establish him. So when you run this fake to Roberts, let it go. And just see how it kind of freezes everybody. Now, the sight lines downfield are perfect to find a Milt Steagall. Another second and two. Stopped. But enough momentum. And where the spot is, we'll give Winnipeg another first down. Milt Steagall continues to trip on this game. Again in the red zone. Go the Bombers. Behind center. Glenn the bootleg again. The play action and a touchdown to guess who? Milt Steagall. Career touchdown. 132. Well, I think, it, Brian, it was so prophetic to hear Kevin Glenn in a clip earlier talk about knowing your receivers. I, I know what they're going to do now after two years as a starter. And watch this. Let it run. To the left of your screen, Milt Stiegel's going to come into the picture. And he stops right there. And then he goes back to the inside, away from the coverage of Steinhauer. Glenn throws back across the grain, fearless. And they've got it to, to, to make some plays here. Bombers have protected the ball very well so far. Glenn fires. And the man of the day certainly has been number 85 on the receiving end a number of times. Well, and, and Stiegel's so good, obviously, against man-to-man. -man. I mean, that's what every receiver wants to see. But, you know, here he is, and he just goes down right in the soft spot, sits down in his own coverage. Again, play action. Look, right there, I see the hole. 
I'll make myself a good target. That is so easy for a touchdown that penalty there, but it did not. Second and nine, Alouette showing blitz. And here they come again. Glenn across the middle. That's complete to Milt Stiegel. That pass was off within two seconds and complete and a first down. Again, Kevin, Glenn demonstrating how much he's matured and really being able to recognize that they're going to drop everybody into a zone and then seeing that Milt Stiegel sits down in that zone. We saw a receiver, Thyron Anderson for Montreal, run through the zone. This time, Milt Stiegel. Second and five for the Bombers. Here comes the blitz from the Alouettes. And a deep pass intended for Stiegel. A fight for him. But a flag at the line of scrimmage, and that exciting play is coming back. Thrown, and boy, that takes away a great play by Milt Stiegel. Great circus catch. All for naught. You have to change the game plan at all because you have two offensive linemen down. Significantly. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Coach. <laughs> Stan, let's shut him down offensively. Kevin Glenn with a pass. It's complete. And Milt Stiegel. Back into this game with a jump catch. Well, Stiegel only has one catch until that point. After that great performance last week of 10 receptions and 135 yards and a touchdown, goes up high, gets the ball, spins to try. He's on his way to chasing most receptions. You see, he's one behind Rocky Di Pietro, another great from Hamilton. So it is a first down for the Blue Bombers. Glenn with a quick release, and Stiegel makes the catch. Ricky Bell makes the tackle, the ball is loose. So you may not challenge this, but the challenge flag is thrown out by Doug Berry. Let's take a look. It is punched out by Kai Ellis. 44-16, the Bombers blown out at home. Ending a three-game winning streak. You can't put the blame on us. We just didn't play well today. He had some flags on us, but we didn't. We didn't play. Even if they wouldn't have thrown those flags, we played well enough to win today. I don't. I don't know. But we we watch the film tomorrow and, and we move on. Edmonton, they're going to be coming. We're going to go in there. They're going to be fresh coming off that bye week. But we're going to find out what we made of now. It's a tough day at the office for us. The way we won last game, I don't think that's going to happen. That's very rare. For a CFL game, you know, to happen like that. Well, I guess Montreal just beat us like that. But uh, it's definitely going to be a hard fought game. Uh, you know, we'll change some things. I'm, I'm guaranteed they're going to change some things too from the last game. So we got to come out and, and, and be fired up also. You know, we're coming off a pretty bad uh, uh, loss and, and, and we're looking to get get this momentum going back. Uh, you know, these first six games, uh, it'd be nice to start off uh, four and two and three and three. Four and two is a lot better than three and three. Four receivers to the wide side for Glenn underneath Milt Stiegel. The crossing route and lost his footing underneath K.O. Griever. The Edmonton Eskimos wanted to go with the blitz from the linebacking core. And Gerald Dixon from the left of your screen. Dixon is going to come from here, but he is so late coming from this side that that gives time to uh, Kevin Glenn to throw the crossing route to Milt Stiegel. That blitz was poorly timed by Gerald. Had Winnipeg recovered, it would have been a first down. They didn't need to get to the first down yardage. Milt Stiegel ducking away, and Milt off to the races. And hold down at the 32-yard line. Reggie Durden with the tackle, and Kevin Glenn with his biggest play of the game, 45 yards to Milt. And most of the yardage coming after the fact, it really was just to the right of your screen, about a 10-yard out pattern by Milt Stiegel. He's just going to catch this on a timing route and then watch him turn around, make a good move there. And off he goes, and he had a couple of blockers out in front of him, Andre Thurman, one of them, and then just sort of cut right back into traffic. Let's see how the Bombers respond. Short drop, Milt Stiegel. One great receiver with a touchdown catch, so the Bombers go to their ace receiver. Million yards for the line of scrimmage. Here comes the blitz. Glenn gets it away. Stiegel's got the first down, crossing midfield before he's dumped by Malcolm Frank. And that's film work, that play right there. That's a blitz that...
clearly Kevin Glenn recognized quickly, as did Milt Stiegel, and the timing is absolutely perfect. You can see the pressure coming from the outside, and he can see that it's timed up off the edge, and look at the timing. The throw is in, out of Kevin Glenn's hands and into the hands of Milt Hamilton, so the folks in Steeltown hopefully will come prepared. There's a pass to Stiegel and a first down up at the Winnipeg 29-yard line. Kevin Glenn hooking up with his favorite target regularly in the second half. We're watching two of the great slot backs in this game in Milt Stiegel and, and Jason Tucker for the Edmonton Eskimos and big play receivers that can get up top. Now Milt Stiegel and all, all proceeds going to the Cancer Care Manitoba. So buy your ticket for that and watch it there. It should be fun. It is a very reason to be thrilled with the start for this revamped team under Doug Berry and another big first down production as Milt Stiegel goes over 100 with that first down catch from Kevin Glenn. You go to your reliable receivers. We've seen it with Ricky Ray and, and Jason Tucker and, and Kevin Glenn. Right back to Stiegel, who's run a couple. Kevin Glenn back to Milt to bobble, but hangs on. Milt Stiegel just continues to amaze, doesn't he, when you look at where he is. And it's been over 100 against. The Edmonton Eskimos, first down, and they're going back to Stiegel again, and he's got it! Over Keo Kramer, three straight Stiegel receptions, and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are threatening. We mentioned it earlier, crossing routes for Stiegel, crossing routes, it was a lot of this for Stiegel. It was a lot of that for Stiegel. Guess what he does this time? Deep. You set up your defensive backs by crossing routes, crossing routes, quick outs, and then just take them deep. And Craver is in a chase position the whole way. I mentioned he gave Craver fits three weeks ago, second and nine. Eskimo's trying to get the ball back for their offense. And here's a pass to Stiegel, and it's going to be close to a first down. What a clutch catch. That was by Stiegel with Gerald Dixon hanging on. And was it enough? Everybody eyeballing this. Milt Stiegel does a nice job of, of keeping but gets intercepted by Robert Bean. That appears to seal the game, but Kevin Glenn, trying to kill the clock, fumbles the ball. It's recovered by Edmonton. They reviewed it, and the call of the field was upheld, so Edmonton regains possession, and they punch it in. Jason Tucker, touchdown. Nine-yard play with just seconds left. The game continues. One last shot. Firing a penalty for Kevin Glenn. Downfield for Stiegel. He's got it. Oh, no! Milt Stiegel! Are you kidding? This is unbelievable! Touchdown, Bombers! The most remarkable touchdown of Milt Stiegel's career. 100 yards on the final play. And it's 133 touchdowns in his career. Well, they didn't want to pass interference, but they forgot to tackle. Unbelievable. And Suits, now we have seen everything tonight. And he ran by two of them, one including Malcolm Frank, the veteran. Unbelievable. The last play of the football game. And the future Hall of Famer finds a way. Milt Stiegel, the inside receiver. Concentration to avoid that contact and the tackle by Malcolm Frank who dropped his head. Milt Stiegel is gone. Unreal. We have seen it all. Well, it for well, I am sure there are many Bomber fans, and I ran into a few today that turned off their TVs, went to bed, and didn't see the end of the game against the Eskimos. Bombers down by three, on their own 10, one last play, and what happened next will be remembered and replayed forever. Here we go, the last play of the game, barring a penalty, Kevin Glenn in the shotgun. 
And he throws it long down the left side for Stiegel. He's got it, and he's gone. Milt Stiegel's going all the way for a touchdown on the last play of the game. A hundred-yard touchdown pass. Stiegel caught the ball between two stunned Edmonton defenders around center field. I don't think he could believe it himself. And there was nobody left to beat, and he took it into the end zone. And who could have imagined an ending like that? Well, there you go. CJOB's Bob Irving, a little excited to save the least. 25-22 the final as Milt Stiegel saves the day for the Bombers and Kevin Glenn. Keith Stokes here. Did I go to Mass before I went to the game? <laughs> you know, Milt Stiegel and the Blue Bombers have to be in somebody's good books to have pulled off perhaps the greatest last play victory in CFL history. Downfield for Stiegel. He's got it. Oh, no! Milt Stiegel! Are you kidding? This is unbelievable. Touchdown, Bombers! This is uh, the wildest end to a game I've seen in my 13 years. We kind of looked up, and you know, we were talking to the D-lineman. We were blocking at the time. You know, it's kind of like, hey, good game, good game. We looked up. Oh, man, he caught it. I think he's going. Uh, it was amazing. Milton and uh, Kevin were talking about the play before the play did, uh, even started. Kevin asked Milt, you going to try to beat him? And Milt said, I'm going to beat him. And there you go, touchdown. The most remarkable touchdown of Milt Stiegel's career. 100 yards on the final play. It was crazy. I say it's still hard to believe that it happened that way. I've been, I've been playing football since I was four, and I've, I've never seen anything like that happen in the game before. Charles said that you, you and Kevin discussed the play in the huddle. Yeah, throw it to me. I'm going to try to catch it and score. That was the last one that happened. <laughs> the catch at Commonwealth was a 100-yard play that erased what would have been a heartbreaking loss as Kevin Glenn's fumble led to the Eskimos' go-ahead touchdown with 15 seconds left. But from the lowest of lows, you went to the highest of highs. The person I'm most happy for is definitely Kevin because uh, if you just saw his, uh, his face and his eyes after that fumble when we came to the sideline and they scored that touchdown, he was pretty down. Then the way our defense played and, and it happened, uh, if we would have happened to lose that game that way, would have been very disappointing. So devastating. I'm not going to use that word. But it would have been harder to come back. And, uh, you know, I think now they'll come to practice on Sunday with a little bit of pep in their step and looking forward to it. We got the victory. No matter how we got it, uh, we got the victory. And, and, and we're in 4-2 and two right now. We're in a lot better position than being 3-3. Three and three. When the ball left Kevin's hand, you were running. Tell me what you were thinking as you saw that ball go through the air. Well, as I was running before I caught it, Brazel screaming, tip it, tip it, because both of the guys, I mean, pitch it, because both of the guys had basically collided in on me. But when I caught it and realized nobody was in front of me, uh, I just kept running, and then I saw Brazel behind me, and we were just running into the end zone. So, uh... I mean, my thing was, first of all, just catch the ball, you know, give, your, give, our chance, give ourselves a chance to score, but I had to catch the ball to begin with. So when I caught the ball and then the guy in, who was covering me, I don't know where he was, and then Malcolm Frank, the guy who was covering Brazel, missed the tackle, and I knew there was nothing else but green grass in the end zone. And how did it feel when Brazel tackled you in the end zone? That was the hardest hit I think I've, I've been hit all year. It, it really hurt, and I told him afterwards I was mad at him, but uh, he said I didn't care. You know, he was just so excited, and everybody was excited, and everybody was piling on top of me, and I was suffocating. I was like, man, get these guys off of me. But, I mean, it, it's a great feeling. Like I said, it, it's history, and then again, it's history. You know, uh, we, we talk about it, but we definitely have to move on. But it, it, it's definitely something that will be remembered for a lifetime. And he's had a few of them. Milt Stiegel with a 100-yard touchdown reception, 254 yards receiving on the night for the... He was the touchdown beagle right there. Crazy finish. Still shaking uh, our hands. Yeah, so Edmonton uh, <laughs> falls. Uh, they lose that game in a heartbreaking fashion. Winnipeg improves to 4-2 and two to keep the heat on Montreal in the East. How did that happen, Jock? How I'm, did that happen? Uh, I'm sure Edmonton fans are trying to figure that out. Let me just, it, well, first of all, there's a couple things. This is the psychology of it. The players just thought the game was over. That's point number one, and they weren't hustling. But the second point is the call from the sideline still has me scratching my head. The defensive coordinator, whoever called this, what he wanted is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys up on the line of scrimmage. And number five and number four that you see down there are actually going to pop out, fake blitz, and then drop. Why? I'm not sure why. And then you're going to see guys jogging down the field, not hustling, no free safety in the middle, no guys deep. How does one explain that? Well, it's just a bad call from the sideline. The players in the field are not reacting and adapting. You would hope they'd say, what did that call? I'm not doing that. Guys, 
back up 50 yards and let's win and throw it throw underneath. That didn't happen, unfortunately. Uh, game over. Can you imagine Kevin Glenn under the center? He looks over. He's got Brazel and Stiegel one on one. No well, safety. No safety. <laughs> uh, come on. You know, Great play by Glenn, too. Uh, that needs to be hey, mentioned. They made it happen, right? They made it happen, but Edmonton really opened the door for him. But I'm telling you what, Coach Machocha, I was feeling for him because they just basically stole the game. Now, I thought the right team won the football game. I thought the Bombers deserved to win it. But when you go through this roller coaster of emotions, I'm telling you, this really ages a man. Watch this. Danny's going, what? you got to be kidding me. <laughs> this isn't happening. Who? No. Who's got the Where's ball? the defensive no. coordinator? Where's so I'm going to take a deep breath. I'm going to try to gain my composure, wipe my face, move my hat. He, he, became, he becomes Mr. Twitch right there. And I'm telling you, Schultz, I feel for him because the coaches' yes. emotions that they go through, and I know we're fixing to see the other side of that yes. coin right now, but Danny Machocha couldn't believe his eyes, and I know he had some long conversations with the defensive coordinator on that one. And on the exact opposite, what a feeling for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and that feeling wasn't just last night and then today. You start believing that, hey, maybe we're a team of destiny. Maybe if this is meant to be. You don't just happen to have plays like that. Maybe this Winnipeg Blue Bomber team is destined to play in Winnipeg and against the Great Cup. Whoever shows up and then win it in their hometown. You start thinking about those things and what you believe dramatically affects your performance. So don't think just psychologically this does not help because it does because what you believe is the way you are. And the other groans you were hearing not only in Edmonton were in Toronto and Hamilton right. where they're going, oh man, now that, that gap's even bigger between <laughs> Winnipeg and Montreal in the east. They still have a crucial home and home against one another in uh, late September. And uh, wow, I can only imagine what's going to be happening by then. Dare we say it? Grey Cup. They're hosting the Grey Cup in Winnipeg. You never know. Thanks, Kev. Well, Milt's magical 100-yard dash has been rewarded. Today, the CFL named Stiegel the Offensive Player of the Week. Obviously, this is a stellar score, but the Bomber slot back also added 10 catches and 254 yards to his game stats last week, leaving Stiegel not a bit surprised he beat out quarterback Kevin Glenn for the honor. And I'm not conceited, but they gave it to me because they know the camera's going to be on the pretty guy. You don't want the camera on Kevin. Look at, look at the guy, man. They want the camera on the pretty guy. TSN and CTV and all the logo channels, they want the pretty guy on TV. That's why they have Because Kevin could have won it. The game he had and, 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 and the adversity he overcame, he definitely could have won it. But like I say, the camera has to be on the pretty guy. Nothing against Kevin, but what can I say? Well, the Milt man, Milt Stiegel, named the CFL's Offensive Player of the Week today. It's the first weekly honor of the season for Stiegel, who's never been about the individual accolades. The decision really was a no-brainer after Stiegel scorched the Edmonton Eskimos defense for 254 yards on 10 catches. Stiegel is now the CFL's leading receiver, but let's be honest, he won the award for his last play heroics, a 100-yard game-winning touchdown with no time remaining. Kevin Glenn could have also quite easily won the award as well, but Stiegel told Glenn there was a reason they chose number 85 instead of Glenn. You, you did well enough to win it, but why didn't you win it, Captain? You know, you want me to tell you what he thinks? Because he has a face for television and no one else does. See, see how he, he thinks? That's what he thinks. It's cool, though. Uh, it's a team thing. It's definitely not me by myself. And the fact that they give it to an individual, I guess I got to give it to somebody. But uh, me getting that uh, award is because of what my teammates did for me. and. Uh, Especially what Kevin did, you know, he's not getting any credit for uh, for the big play and all the stuff he did. But Kevin definitely deserves a lot of accolades for that game. They had a couple of close games come down to the end. It could have went either way. You know, they win those games, they have uh, three or four victories. So we're not underestimating anybody. Uh, we look at everybody as this is our most important game of the year because it's our next game. So we're going in knowing that if we don't play our uh, best game, we can easily be beat. You know, they have some talent over there offensively. They haven't put it together yet, and uh, we don't want to be the game where they get everything together. So we're just going to go. On there and, and execute and hopefully come out with a victory. You know, he's been the talk of the CFL all week long. Winnipeg Blue Bombers super receiver Milt Stiegel, who came up with that 100-yard magical touchdown reception a week ago at Edmonton. But uh, how about the guy who threw the pass, Kevin Glenn? Both those guys are going right back to work in Hamilton tonight as the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and Hamilton Tiger Cats open things up tonight on Friday Night Football. Starting lineups brought to you by Tom's. Tom's tackles heartburn fast. Here we go. Play action and a roll right from Glenn in the first pass. 
just like the last pass last week goes to number 85, Milt Stegall. They've been able to protect Kevin Glenn. Now in the red zone. Play action again. Glenn looks to Stegall. Milt Stegall brought down at the five-yard line. And another first down. Winnipeg will go first and goal. In the secondary for the most part every game this year. Glenn launching and caught. But guess who? 85 does it again. Mr. Big Play. Mr. Big Time. Milt Stegall. Well, and he just keeps getting better and better. Here he is. He's going to run the corner against Renard Cox, the linebacker, who's back in. And watch the acceleration. He makes the break right here, and he sees he's going to have to stretch out. He's got a little extra miles per hour there to catch up to that. Does this look like a guy who's going to retire? I mean, here, here's a pack that, uh, Kicker had to go and replace Jamie Bourne with Mark Myers. Glenn. Once again, Milt Stiegel. a crunching blow sandwich there but looks like he will come short of the first down that will bring out Troy Westwood in the worst it looks like the cats will give up three well you know what for the most part uh, one ball that got in behind Renard Cox the Ticats haven't done a bad job in the secondary now they come up nicely Tay Cody will come up and support on that catch by Stiegel you know when you throw it six yards Glenn's been doing a lot of this, though, and Milt Stiegel again. Stiegel has been a machine the last couple of weeks, and the machine keeps ticking. Well, this is a throw of, of great confidence for Kevin Glenn. Here's Stiegel right here, and he just, once he clears the linebacker, that ball is in the air. You see Bobby Brooks there, 55 coming out. He can't get there from the middle, and my, oh, my, Milt Stiegel already with not even to half time and he gives his offense some breathing room with that great play but do you not see the confidence of Kevin Glenn? Confidence that also improved last week after doing more of this and Stiegel head hard still comes down with the football and he's going to the sidelines. Yeah he took a real shot from Tay Cody Second time Cody's delivered a good blow, and I think Bill's shaking up a little bit here, and I think he needs to go down on a knee. But the thing that I like when you watch this from the end zone, watch Kevin Glenn reading. As soon as he looks again, the middle linebacker, the ball is in the air. Now, in fairness to Glenn, that ball had to be thrown high to get over the middle linebacker, but then he took an awful shot, and I just hope his ribs are okay because. You hate to see a guy like Stiegel go down, but again, Tay Cody, that's the second time he's had a pretty good lick on him. I don't know if it was the front or the back. It might have been the hit to the front. Let's take a look here. Right there in the back and the front. So we got Sandwich there, a couple of hits. Stiegel and Charles Roberts. <laughs> it's pretty funny because you know it's coming, and sometimes you just, you just can't stop it. They're that talented. Glenn. Audibling at the line now. Stiegel comes in motion. Second and about 14. Stiegel stopping. And this is going to bring out Troy Westwood. So the best, again, Winnipeg can do is a field goal. But quite simply, the Hamilton Tiger Cat defense has been on the field way too long here in this first half. Oh, it's, you know, and again, we get a humidex of 37 tonight. And, uh, regardless of whether you practice and are used to it. I mean, you out in front, 22 nothing, pitching a shutout here tonight. Kevin Glenn finding targets left and right. And once again, Milt Stiegel picking up where he left off in the first half and last week. You know what? This, this is just so easy for Winnipeg right now. They, they bring Siegel in motion. He becomes the third receiver in. Bernard Cox, the linebacker, has to cover him. They clear out, and then there's just all kinds of room to the outside. I mean, it, 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 you can see it coming a mile away. And Kevin All of a sudden, they lose. They're losing, and it looks like they're going to defeat. And then they pull it out. Milt Stiegel has had a wonderful night catching the football. And Kevin Glenn has just been so on target, firing bullseyes at number 85. Yeah, and, and they've had no pressure. Very tall quarterback for starters. If you talk to anybody in the league, they share that same opinion. Yeah. Milt 
Stiegel again can't find the end zone. Well, 11th catch tonight for Stiegel. And it's nice to see the Winnipeg offense really took a holiday in the third quarter, but now they've come back in this fourth quarter. This is a beautifully executed, methodical drive. And there's Stiegel. He feels the inside. He goes inside, works back out into the hole. I mean, he just knows where the side. Mel Stiegel, what a night for him. Our defense was playing so well, we, we just decided let's not just put our defense in a bad position. We had a nice drive and scored a touchdown, but, you know, first half, it, it was a complete game. That was a great performance, especially defensively. Uh, I don't care uh, who you're playing against, who's a quarterback, and you hold a team to zero points. That's pretty big. Uh, offensively, uh, we didn't put together a complete game, but uh, the first half, and we had a nice couple of drives in the second half. A uh, quick glance at the Bomber stats over the past two weeks, and the game plan on offense looks pretty simple. Find number 85. If he's open, throw it to him. If he's covered by three or more defenders, uh, chuck him the rock anyway and watch the magic happen. Yes, it's hard to fathom that Milt Stiegel was actually contemplating retirement at the end of last season. He may be creeping toward his 37th birthday, but Chase's dad is perfectly in sync with quarterback Kevin Glenn. Yeah, that definitely just comes with time, you know, getting to know each other. And I tell him, you know, Kahari and I, uh, the chemistry we had didn't come overnight. It came over just getting used to each other. And Kevin and I were starting to develop that relationship. Uh, and you can see it on the field. And a lot of times what we're doing, nobody knows what we're doing. Our own teammates don't know what we're doing. But it just comes from uh, us having that relationship that are able to communicate without communicating almost. Milt's playing super. I, I just hope he keeps wanting to play like he is right now. And, for at least another year. In their defense. The touchdown Beagle is destroying the opposition. He leads the league with almost 900 yards receiving after seven games. To the 10. Gets a, block. Touchdown. a lot of things that we're doing, we, we formation for him. And uh, we got to be cautious about that. There's no question. Um, I think that a couple of times I noticed that Hamilton was aware of that and we're double covering just towards him and letting everybody else go one on one. So we'll be we're aware of that. And when you start giving a guy a ball 10, 12 times a game, things like that are probably going to happen. All Blue Bomber fans can breathe easy again. The Turtle Man Milt Stiegel was back at practice today. Granted, he was only going half speed after taking a day off yesterday as a precautionary measure after injuring his ribs in the Bombers shutout win over the Ticats. Stiegel was sandwiched on this play in the second quarter last Friday. He remained on the field for a couple of minutes, missed a couple of plays, and then returned for the remainder of the game. He finished the contest with 11 catches for 162 yards. Stiegel also broke his ribs a few seasons ago in 2002, causing him to miss the entire postseason. But Stiegel says the injury is nothing like that one, and he will be back in the blue and gold lineup on Friday for the rematch. It's a little sore and tender. It's nothing like it, you know, what I did back in 2002. Nothing close to that. So uh, we're just hoping by Friday it's, it's it's ready to go. So you hope to play on Friday still? Then? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm playing on playing on Friday. You know, there's no question about it. Uh, I'm not trying to sit out any game. I hate sitting out practice, let alone a game. So I'm just hoping. Uh, I just want to take it slowly. You know, it's a long week. Had a couple extra days. Just give it an extra day rest. And like I said, uh, I'm, I'm definitely playing on playing on Friday. And two members of the Blue Bombers have been rewarded for their Week 7 performances. Milt Stiegel is the CFL's Offensive Player of the Week for a second consecutive week. Stiegel was a unanimous selection for his 11-catch, 162-yard performance against the Tabbies. The Turtle Man now leads the CFL in receiving yards with 856 and yards from scrimmage. Well, it is mid-season and every team is suffering through their share of aches and pains, including Milt Stiegel, who is still nursing sore ribs. Therefore, he will be a game-time decision for tomorrow night's outing. Am I playing? Uh, we're, we're, we're still looking at it. You know, things are progressing. I'm feeling better than I did yesterday. Uh, uh, we still have a little bit more time. So, But the way things are going right now, it looks like I'm going to be playing and, and, and everything's looking uh, good right now. Number 85 should be in the lineup for the Bombers tomorrow night. Milt Stiegel is listed on the active roster, and barring a major setback, will suit up against the Ticats. Stiegel's only been going half speed this week in practice as he takes it gingerly after bruising his ribs in last week's shutout victory. Stiegel finished the game, and the injury is nowhere near as severe as it was in 2002 when he cracked his ribs, forcing him to miss the playoffs. Bottom line is he should be just fine, 
but officially he's listed as a game time decision. Second time. He's uh, getting better every day, and he's, as of yesterday, he wasn't still quite sure. So we've still got today and tomorrow, and we'll know exactly tomorrow afternoon. That I don't feel like Milt Stiegel is a guy that needs to take all the reps during the week, and so if he tells me that he's ready to play a football game tomorrow, then he will play. We're getting better. Uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll be uh all ready to go. That's, that's definitely the plan. Uh, we're progressing. Uh, today was a lot better. Not much. Uh, there was still some soreness, but not as much. Not as much stiffness. Not as much discomfort. So we're hoping by tomorrow we're ready to go. And the accolades continue to pour in for the Turtle Man. Today the CFL named Stiegel as July's Offensive Player of the Month. Stiegel in his 12th season in the CFL is the leading receiver through the first seven weeks of the season. Twice in the month of July, he was named the Offensive Player of the Week. Stiegel is now just four touchdowns shy of the all-time league mark. I mean, I guess a guy that uh, it was decided about an hour ago that Milt Stiegel is not going to play. But uh, for more on that, let's take you back out to Canada in Stadium and reintroduce Brian Williams, who had a chance to speak with the touchdown beagle. Thank you, David. I did indeed speak earlier with Stiegel. The Blue Bombers, of course, are the feel-good story of the year in Canadian football. And there's no question, their leader is their great veteran receiver, Milt Stiegel. How about these numbers? So far this season, Stiegel has 856 yards receiving. That is nearly 200 yards more than G. Roy Simon of the BC Lions. As I mentioned, I had a chance to sit down earlier and talk with Milt Stiegel, who's out of tonight's game with a rib injury. You're in your 12th season. You're closing in on the all-time touchdown record. All 12 of those seasons, have been in Winnipeg. Why have you remained so loyal? Well, it's a respect factor. Uh, he said, I started here in 95, and when I first came up here, my plan was only play a, a couple of years and head back to the NFL. And I had an opportunity in 1998, and, but it was unfortunate. I had an injury, and I had to come back up. And all along, I wanted to stay in Winnipeg. Uh, I felt comfortable here, and, and a lot of people have been asking me, you have opportunity to go to bigger cities. Uh, you well, know. Th that's what I was getting at. I, I hear you've had opportunities to go to Toronto, to go to Vancouver, more money, more endorsements, more side deals, but you have remained loyal to Winnipeg. Yeah, they've treated me uh, with such great respect and, 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 and everything has just been so great here. Of course, I had an opportunity to go some other places and, and maybe make a little bit more money. They, they pay me well now, but maybe make a little bit more money. But the way they've treated me is just out of respect for uh, one of the main reasons why I've been here. Milt, as you close in on the all-time touchdown record, do you remember the first one? I remember the first touchdown. Uh, 1995 uh, against Calgary, if I'm correct, it was in the fourth quarter. Uh, Kevin McDougal uh, threw me the pass. Milt Stiegel, his first touchdown. Let me read you a list of names. We talked about Kevin McDougal, we just mentioned him. Mm -hmm. There's Reggie Slack, Kent Austin, Chris Vargas, you know what I'm doing, Dexter Dawson, <laughs> who are some of the others? Troy Kopp, Jay Walker, Jay Walker, Kerwin Bell, mm -hmm. Kahari Jones. Brian Aya. <laughs> quarterbacks, Brian Aya, that you've played with. There's mm -hmm. not a Doug Flutie, Anthony Calvillo, or Dave Dickinson among the bunch. I, I don't want to disrespect those quarterbacks, but mm -hmm. you know where I'm going. Uh, you've achieved this, I'm not saying by yourself, but without playing with a Doug Flutie or an Anthony Calvillo. Yeah, I have an opportunity besides Kahari to play with a quarterback for a long period of time. But the quarterbacks I've played with, I think uh, we formed so, one, uh, somewhat of a relationship. They started understanding that Milt Stiegel is, is not gonna run the call route. He may run some option routes, so I better get prepared for that. Let me take you back a couple of weeks Edmonton, final play of the game, touchdown pass, uh, unbelievable play. In fact, before I get your reaction, here's the call by Chris Cuthbert. One last shot. Downfield for Stiegel. He's got it. Oh, no! Milt Stiegel! Are you kidding? This is unbelievable. Touchdown Bombers! The most remarkable touchdown of Milt Stiegel's career! I read somewhere you said that's uh, that's the best one you've scored or your most memorable. Is it really? So far, so far, and I, I was telling uh, a lot of media people that I've been playing football since I was four, and just not to play, but the entire last two minutes of that game was the most you know memorable moments of my football career. And that touchdown was just incredible. You know, how many times have you been in a situation you need 100 yards to go, it's it's four seconds left, and then you you have a chance to score that touchdown. So that that's something I'll remember forever. And, 
My wife, they showed it on local TV in Atlanta. It's been all on ESPN. All my buddies and family's been calling me. So up to this point right now, that's the most memorable, you know, play of my football career. And, and I'll remember it. it. It's more than just a football game. That's history, you know. That's something that people involved in the situation, people who've seen it will remember for a long time. You're involved in so much in Winnipeg. You live in Atlanta in the offseason, but you came back. Uh, Big Manitoba Cancer Dinner several months ago. Uh, are you set to retire? Is this your, this your final season in the CFL in Winnipeg? Uh, like I tell everybody, you ask me tomorrow and I'll let you know. So when, I, when you ask me tomorrow, I'll say you ask me the next day. <laughs> when, you, when you get my, I just take it day by day. Do me a favor. I know you want to be a broadcaster. Wait till I retire, all right? <laughs> well, you have about 30 years left, so we'll see. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Milt, thank you. Thanks. Stay healthy. Thanks. Team, unfortunately, we will not see Milt Stiegel tonight. The rib injury he suffered in a big hit last week. Wayne Shaw and Tay Cody took him over the middle. The team that has a number of weapons, but when number 85 is not in the lineup, they're going to miss him. Well, and that's what he's on pace to do this year. A fantastic year for Stiegel. And uh, I love the interview with uh, Brian Williams in the pregame show where uh, Brian asked him, you know,